Hello cheapskaters. I'm Kath Armstrong, creator of the Cheapskates Club, where our goal is to live life debt-free, cashed up and laughing. If this is your first time visiting our channel, welcome. And if it's not, welcome back. We are so very, very happy you have joined us, especially as it's daylight savings. First, first show for daylight savings time. So we might have a few people who have forgotten. Anyway, there's quite a few of you here. I just saw there's a pile of comments for me to have a look at. Okay. We'll give everyone a few minutes to come in and then we can get started. How have you all been? Um, hello, Yvonne. Hello, Estelle. Hello, Del Delaney. <sighs> Doesn't matter if you don't last the distance. We appreciate you being here. Hello, Kylie. Yes, it is very chilly. I did go and put long sleeves on. I've been in short sleeves for two, three days. And uh, I had to go and put long sleeves on. It was cold. Um, okay, Yvonne's been planning up tomatoes. It is too cold to put them in the ground. It's been weird weather. Hello, Beverly. Um, Hannah has something else that she does on Tuesday nights now, Estelle. Uh, hello, Jenny. Hello, Lynette. Hello, Trina, Beverly. Oh, gosh. Tegan, Evelyn. Catnap, Sylvia. Ruth. Jaka. Okay. Yes. Daylight saving stuff. My favorite time of the year. I love daylight saving. Not fond of summer, but um, love daylight saving is my favorite time of the year because Wayne does the cooking outside, not inside. Kitchen stays clean, stove stays clean, oven stays clean. It's all done outside in the barbecue. I absolutely love it. Hello, Julia. Well, okay. Look, I think we'll get started just because I've been a bit under the weather this week. So I'm not feeling quite so um, energetic as I usually am. Hello, Selena. Okay. All right. Now, a couple of things. If you're not already a subscriber to our channel, I think most of you are, click that subscribe button below me and then click the bell and select how often you would like to be notified of new videos on our channel now i try to put them up i try to put them up a couple of times a week but it doesn't always work that way i do my best though because trust me i'm not good at this video thing and what you see is my real life you see the chaos and the craziness. Okay, now we're prepared to be prepared. And I know that's a dough. And I'm not trying to be funny or sarcastic or patronizing. We prepare um, to be prepared. We're prepared for whatever comes our way. Now, it could be another pandemic and... Apparently, according to the CSIRO, we can look forward to two or more a year from now on. Isn't that a cheery thought? Or it could be unemployment, or it could be even more interest rate rises that make mortgage payments beyond difficult. And if you have a mortgage and today's quarter of a cent has impacted you, my heart aches for you. It could be illness. It could be a natural disaster. Look, even a, a short, swift local storm can require us to be prepared. And so we prepare. We build our pantries. And that's the entire pantry, not just the food. Because remember, to me, the pantry encompasses the cleaning supplies, the toiletries, the garden needs medicines, first aid supplies, sewing supplies, um, 
gift supplies, spare clothing, craft supplies, books. We need to be able to entertain ourselves and educate ourselves during a disaster or a pandemic or a crisis as well as eat. So anything we need and use that we store is a part of our household pantry. Now, for us, we make sure we have enough of what we need to last for however long we think we need to be self-sufficient and self-reliant. And they are two very different things. But we need to be prepared to be both. And not just in a crisis, just in our day-to-day -day living, being a little more self-sufficient, a little more self-reliant is a good thing. But people ask, how long do we need to prepare for? And I will say that's up to you. Now, my advice is that you prepare ahead enough that you will be comfortable not only with what you have, but with the decision you've made for time how long you think you will need to be self-sufficient and self-reliant. And that's something only you can decide. You know, what works for me and my family may or may not work for you and yours. Now, for my family, we are prepared enough to maintain our current standard of living for one full year. That's 12 months or 52 weeks or 365 days. We can stretch it if we need to. Now, you may think that's extreme or you may think it's not enough. Now, I'm not a prepper. Just let me clarify that. I am not a prepper, but I do prepare and I always have. Now, I don't have tons of dehydrated foods and tinned foods and I don't have gallons of water and other things stashed away in bunkers or sheds or pits under the ground because that's not my idea of preparing. That's my idea of living terrified of what might happen. I don't want to be scared. I just want to be prepared. But I do keep 12 months worth of everything that we use on hand. As people in general, cheapskaters to be specific, we prepare now so we can relax in the future. That's what we do. Um, for example, how many of you have joined the Own Your Christmas Challenge and started preparing for Christmas already? So you don't need to stress in December. If you haven't joined that challenge yet, zip over to our website. It's on the home page. You can join. There's still plenty of time to join. But that's preparing. It's preparing so you can relax. We prepare so we can enjoy our retirement. We pay into superannuation funds. We pay off our debt we pay off the mortgage we build savings that's preparing for our future and you know i've noticed and I, even we've been thinking this way but often in the couple of years before retirement we'll update our cars and the fridges and the freezers and the computers and the tvs and you know and all the creature comforts that we enjoy so that we can continue to enjoy them with a plan that they will see us out in our retirement. It used to make me laugh when my mum would say, oh, that'll see me out. And then my auntie started saying, oh, this is our last car. It'll see me out. When we updated my car at the end of last year, I said to Wayne, now what? I think this one will see me out. And we both nearly died laughing in the showroom because I hadn't even realised what I was saying. It's not that I'm planning to depart this earth anytime soon, but I was just thinking, you know, it was a brand new car. It's got, you know, a good lifetime ahead of it. How much, you know, how old am I going to be? You know, do I want to be 103 and driving? I'm not so sure I do. Not that I'm 80 or anything, but, you know, um, it just made us laugh. So, 
you know, some of us prepare for retirement by doing those things um, or by downsizing, moving to, to a home that's more compact, easier to look after, less work, less cleaning, less maintenance, less gardening. All of these things that we do are preparing. And we do them now. We just take our time. There's no rush. There's no panic. We prepare for our future. So for most of you, I know it's not for me, you may not have realised it, but you're preparing. That's what you're doing. Now, right now, we're preparing for a long, hot, wet, very expensive summer. We here in Victoria have been warned, and, and frankly, I believe that by the time the government is telling us to prepare, it's too late. Whatever disaster they're talking about, planned, think is happening, is already happening. Now, that's just my opinion, but I say it as I see it, because they do not like people to be prepared <laughs> um you know a few weeks back i was talking about normal and how what we're living isn't normal and you know what it's not really it's not it's not the normal we had in 2019 but we prepare so that when push comes to shove we can survive the abnormal and maintain our normal lifestyle. We prepare so that we can eat the food that we like, wear the clothes that we like, enjoy the hobbies that we like to maintain that normalcy in our lives. We prepare so that we don't become a victim of complacency and normalcy bias. Because we understand, because we can still live our life, we understand that what other people are living isn't normal. So we don't get sucked into that, that um, mindset of, well, you know, this is the new normal. No, it doesn't have to be. It's not and it doesn't have to be. You know, now we've just finished winter, although the way it feels tonight, it might be we might be back to it. Um, and I don't know about you, where you live, but I actually found this winter so very, very cold and, and wet, obviously. It was really, really wet. It was so wet that my poor lavender turned up its toes. And that lavender has been in that bed for years and thrived. But this winter, it just could not cope with the water. And now we're heading into summer. And the weather forecast is for hot, um, hot, very, very, very wet and long days. I need a drink. Sorry, guys. <clears throat> Our northern hemisphere friends are heading into winter. And honestly, my heart is aching aching for them you know i saw on the news in britain they're protesting in the streets with signs that say heat or eat and even the politicians are saying that most brits will be facing that choice exactly either heat their homes or eat when energy prices increase 80 percent 80 percent in a few days they're saying that energy bills will account for 20% of disposable income. It's an 80% increase and 20% of disposable income will go just on heating homes. For anyone with debt, this is going to be absolutely catastrophic. You know, they're coming out of a very hot summer, a really severe drought. They've got food shortages. They're in political upheaval because apparently the new prime minister isn't going to last till Christmas. You know, if the people aren't prepared, they're going to suffer and suffer terribly. 
So as we Australians head into summer, we can prepare. We can take a look at our homes and work out how to keep them cool without using energy because, again, we've already been warned here in Victoria to prepare for blackouts during summer. Now, I'd rather have blackouts in summer than in winter, I think. I don't know. I have to toss up about that one. But there's that government warning, prepare for blackouts. The blackouts are already planned, I think. They, they're just conditioning us so that when they actually happen, we'll go, well, you know, we were told to expect them. We won't grumble too much. We won't complain. We won't ask too many questions because we've been conditioned to expect them. We were warned. So we need to prepare to figure out how we're going to cool our homes when there's no power, how we're going to cool our homes and ourselves when the power we do have is so expensive. We can prepare by growing food. Anything, anything you can grow that you don't need to buy is going to be a help. You'll be saving money that will be needed for something else, most likely the mortgage. I was um, listening to a man who was interviewed for the news tonight, just before I watched it, just before I came on. And this year, their mortgage repayments have gone up $1,300 a month. That's two weeks' wages. That's two weeks' take-home pay. Their mortgage payments have gone up. They're both working. On top of that, they have children that need to be cared for because they're both working to try and maintain this mortgage. Things are grim, really, really grim. If we prepare, they don't need to be quite as grim. We can work work around it, work with it, work over it, work under it. We will get through it if we prepare. Um, if you grow some of what you eat, you're not going to be relying on supermarkets and green grocers to have what you need at a price you can afford. Do you remember the $11 lettuce? Not that I think anybody is going to forget that in any short time, but you know, is that going to become the price? Because the price of produce is forecast to double over the next few months. So before Christmas, apparently, price of produce will, will double. Now, don't take my word for it. Do your own research. Find out for yourself. I can plant the seed, but you need to do the work. Start growing what you eat. Sorry, my back's a bit sore tonight. Get your seeds now. Now, they're already hit and miss with supply, so don't wait. If you're going to grow something, get the seeds now or buy the seedlings now. Seeds are better. You get more value, but that's it. If all you've got are pots, then plant in pots, especially if you don't have time or space for garden beds. Just at least try something. If you need tools, get them now. If you need car parts, get them now. If you need dental work done, get it done now. Prepare, prepare, think ahead and just think ahead about what you will need and pay down that debt because even if the only debt you have is your mortgage, you are so blessed, get busy and pay it down as quickly as you can. Hold a garage sale and put the money onto the mortgage. Make sure you mark it is off the principal and yes you can do that paying down the principal will reduce the amount of interest you pay overall get your banker or your mortgage broker to explain it to you if you don't understand it if you have to cut back to pay down that debt do it cut back if you have to give up everything but the bare bone basics do it it's only for a short while in the grand scheme of things so 
no new clothes or shoes, no eating out, no eating out, no takeaway, no new craft supplies. Look on it as a chance to use up what you have by making useful things and selling them to pay down your debt. Put that craft supply to good use. Use it to pay down your debt. Advertise on Marketplace. You'd be amazed at what you can get rid of on Marketplace. Sell the things you don't need, the things you don't use, the things you don't want. Marketplace is great for moving things along and it's, it's really hopping right now with everyone spring cleaning and decluttering and looking for Christmas presents. You know, in the last couple of weeks, I've sold five things. I added um, $330 to the emergency fund just from selling five things that we didn't really want and we certainly weren't using and we never will use them. The other thing you can do is stick to your budget. Um, don't be tempted to splurge. If you're paying down debt, don't be tempted to splurge. Be careful with your shopping. Now, I know that you're all really good grocery shoppers anyway and you stick to your shopping list and you always look for cheaper options. Become even more vigilant about it. Become fanatical about it because every cent, every cent counts. We might not be able to hold a cent in our hand anymore, but every cent counts when it's coming off your debt. Become power conscious and become water conscious. And I know this sounds ridiculous when, you know, a third of the country is underwater, but we still need to conserve water. It is a really precious resource. So become water conscious. It's actually very expensive. Limit trips in the car. Because remember, the fuel excises um, come back onto fuel, so it's estimated to jump by about 25 cents a litre when the oil companies decide they've used up the, I think it was 750 million litres of fuel they had stockpiled that they bought at the cheaper price. And that's on top of the regular... Um, cycle of fuel price increases take a look at what's in your shopping trolley do you really need everything in it can you use ingredients you have to moo anything that's in that trolley because remember ingredients give you options and options save you money plan ahead um, right now, kids' clothes for winter are being cleared out. Right now, the winter grocery lines are being cleared out. If they will keep for next year and they're cheap enough, if you have the cash, buy them now. You'll save some money. You know, when you're shopping for anything, be it food, clothes, shoes, deodorant, can you switch to a cheaper brand for a while? Can you change the way you shop to save money? Because even a couple of dollars a week adds up to $104 a year. And that's, um, you know, grocery money for a couple of weeks. Don't waste anything, especially food. Now, the last couple of weeks, I've turned apples into applesauce. It was delicious. I've dehydrated orange slices. I should have brought something to show you. They are so good to nibble on. Crisp. They snap. They're so tasty. I've dehydrated celery and celery leaves. I've, I even dehydrated the apple peels and powdered them to use in baking. Now, all these things added to the pantry, built the pantry, made sure nothing was wasted, and they help prepare for our future eating. I'm preparing ahead. Look, if that's what scares you, think of it as getting ready to go away for a holiday. 
going away for a holiday. So you prepare by packing, cleaning the house, emptying the fridge, getting the car serviced, making sure medical appointments are covered. You've booked your tickets. You've booked your accommodation. You've got your spending money. You have an itinerary of where you're going. Well, that's planning for your holiday. That's not really any different to planning for your future. It just makes sense to plan and prepare. Anytime. Absolutely anytime. It just makes sense. Because the more we're able to care for ourselves, the more we accept self-responsibility, the less we have to rely on the government or charities or family or friends or um, aid agencies to help us in a crisis. And the better off we are going to be. We shouldn't rely on or even we simply expect someone else to take care of us in a crisis. We're all adults. None of us are stupid. We shouldn't be that lazy. So we plan. We plan ahead. We prepare the best that we can. Now, you don't need to do what anyone else is doing. You do what is best for you and your family and your situation. What I do, use it for ideas. If they work for you, great. If they don't, hopefully they've started you thinking. Even if you're already preparing, you might think there might be something else that you can do that you haven't thought of before. Now, if you're not preparing, I hope this, you know, gets you thinking and actually doing, doing the preparing because it's how we live our lives. Whether, whether there's a crisis or not, we prepare. And when we're prepared, we're saving money. I know that sounds ridiculous. But if we've got, you know, we, we'll use the holiday again. We've prepared for the holiday. So we've booked the tickets. We were able to book them early because we were prepared. So we've got cheaper flights. So because we were booking earlier, we found a really nice hotel for the price of a dodgy hotel. We saved some money there. Because we're preparing planning ahead and preparing. We didn't need to go and buy new clothes. We took a look through the wardrobe and realised we had plenty of clothes to take away on a holiday because who's going to see them? The people that are there, we don't know. We've never met them before. So they don't know that we're wearing clothes that are five or six years old. We're preparing. We're saving money. Paying down your debt is going to save you money in the long run. Thinking ahead with your shopping so that you shop the sales, you keep your pantry full, you'll save money because you won't be buying on the spur of the moment at the supermarket or even worse, the drive through takeaway, whatever, on the way home from work. You've prepared for it. We do it all the time without even thinking about it. You know, I mentioned holidays, Christmas. We did it when we we're having babies. We prepared. We were expecting a new baby, so we thought, what do we need? We need nappies, we need little clothes, we need bottles, we need a pram, we need a capsule. We prepared ahead for those things when the baby arrived so that when the baby did arrive, it had somewhere to sleep. We were able to bring it home in the car. There were clothes for it to wear. We could feed it. We prepared, and we didn't even think about it, and we didn't even realise that's what we were doing. We we're preparing. And of course, once we have that baby, we prepare by buying next year's clothes this year and saving a bit of money and repeating. It's a rinse and repeat, isn't it, when you've got kids? Because you're always a year or two ahead with their clothes just so that you can save a little bit of money. It just makes sense. Now, I'm pretty sure that, you know, you all know the proverb, he who hesitates is lost. Well, 
in this case, he who hesitates in preparing could go hungry, could find themselves homeless, could be in a real muddle because they just haven't prepared. It's easy. Now, if you've got questions, I forgot to say this. If you've got questions, capital letters in the chat. I'm just going to flip over and see what we've got. Whoa. What we've got going on here. Goodness me. Um, okay. All right. Kerry's here paying bills online. Well done, Kerry. Oh. oh, Selena, I'm sorry for your daughter and her partner. Um, I remember how awful it was to have a mortgage repayment that was bigger than your wage. It was just awful. Just, just awful. Yep, well said, Delaney. We prepare now so we can relax in the knowledge that our basic needs are met as we are accustomed when things around us are topsy-turvy. Yep. I know um, during the lockdowns, I mean, Victoria, Melbourne had the worst lockdowns, absolutely the worst. It was awful. Um, but didn't actually bother me especially the bit about not being able to go shopping it didn't actually bother me because I didn't need didn't need to go shopping because you know 30 years ago no what is it 25 years ago 27 years ago 28 years ago 28 years ago had to stop and think how long it was I started preparing so that if something like that happened, there would be no need for us to panic. So nothing for us changed other than we saved a lot of money on fuel because we weren't going anywhere. Everyone was working from home. Um, we weren't going anywhere. I wasn't able to go out, so I didn't go anywhere. It was easy. It sounds really mean, I suppose, but for me personally, the first few lockdowns were a breeze. It didn't really worry me at all because we were we were prepared. Um, the last one nearly did me in. I was just over them by the last one. But until then, um, you know, because I prepared, I didn't really yeah. we'd still go outside I could still potter in the garden I could still walk around the block if I wanted to so I did okay Hello, Maddie. It's good to see you. Here we go. Another well said, Delaney. Remember, sometimes our future comes faster than planned and not quite the way we planned. I planned to retire at 57 and had a beautiful home to retire to, but I got cancer at 54 and my life was turned upside down, I expect. Yeah. Okay. Still soggy where Maddie is. Uh, and Delaney goes on to finish her comment because it cuts you off. Uh, it doesn't let you explain. Um, she was prepared to finish work and she did at 57. Now she's got new plans and that's really good. So we're planning and preparing. Um, all right. 
Tegan's over the mosquitoes already. <laughs> oh. Oh. Feels a bit wintry here too. Um, yeah, my auntie and uncle got one too. Um, we don't qualify because we actually have gas. So we're stuck with gas, which is all right because I actually prefer gas. Um, It's an interesting, an interesting question, Kerry. It's it, from time immemorial, people have always wanted the biggest and best of everything. But where for our parents' generation, our grand, probably our grandparents' generation, they were happy to start small and then either extend or move up. A lot of people now want to come in and they don't want to start small and move up. They want to be up there now. Now, that's not necessarily their whole fault um, because it's really, really hard to find what, I guess you call it a starter home, a basic three or four bedroom home, you know, 14 or 15 squares, very basic, very, you know, cheap to build, suitable for a family, it's hard to find those homes. There aren't many builders around that actually build them anymore. And there's a lot of councils that won't allow them to be built. There are certain size restrictions plan with planning. So homes have to be of a certain size and quality. So it's not necessarily um, the mortgagees fault per se the other thing is though you know um people want to live in a city they want to live in a city they want to be they want to live in the city for whatever reason they're not prepared to travel they're not prepared to move to regional areas that are crying out for workers and for people to move to their areas to keep their areas alive I don't know, they're not prepared to change their jobs or they're not prepared to travel. I don't know. But I think that if, you know, you are just starting out and, you know, the average mortgage is $500,000, that's the average mortgage in Victoria, $500,000. That's a boatload of money, guys. And the repayments on a $500,000 mortgage have gone up nearly $1,700 a month this year alone. So there's, um, there's that, you know, overextending, but also the, that's all there is. For them to buy everything is so expensive because they won't move out of major cities where there are still so many beautiful beautiful country towns that need teachers that need um solicitors they need truck drivers they need checkout chicks they need um nurses and cleaners and bakers they need people to work there, farmhands, they need all these things, people won't move out of the city. You know, now Hannah moved 
out of town. So she's an hour and a half away. That's not, you know, she's an hour and a half from home and in the country. Whereas if I go to visit my friend over the other side of town, it takes me nearly two hours to get to her. And we're still in the same city. So time-wise, Hannah's closer than my friend over the other side of town. And in kilometres, eh, she's only a little bit further in kilometres. Um, by the time you do the zigzag with the freeway and over the bridge and around, it's ridiculous. But she was able to put down 40% deposit because she chose to move out of town. Now, she could have stayed in Melbourne and taken a bigger mortgage and had it put down a smaller deposit. But she'd owe a bucket load of money, whereas now her plan is four years she'll own her house. I hope she'll do it. She will do it. She's pretty determined. Um, so... And she moved there with the thought that she would pay it off and then use that as collateral to move back to Melbourne. But she likes where she is. So that may not happen. People aren't prepared to do that anymore. Everyone wants the biggest and the best and the newest and the greatest. And you've got to have two bathrooms and a powder room and four bedrooms at least. And you need to have a study and you've got to have the theatre room and the kitchen has to be the size of the Taj Mahal and there should be room for a swimming pool in the backyard if there's not already a swimming pool. It's ridiculous. You know, they start small. My advice to anyone, to anyone, no matter your age, if you are looking to buy a house and it's your first home, be sensible. Buy something that you can afford. Buy something not only that you can afford to repay, but that if something needs to be done to it, as in painting or replacing guttering or replacing the hot water heater or carpeting or whatever, you will have the money to do that. Because if you don't and you buy something and you're putting all your money off the mortgage, it's going to become derelict very, very quickly because you simply won't be able to maintain it. Oh, you can tell I feel very strongly about this. Sorry, don't mean to preach. Um, no $11 lettuce. <laughs> I know, lettuce are really cheap to grow it's from seed. Um, and they're easy too. Um... So scary in the UK, we've prepped as and when we could. It does seem to be worldwide. And again, our, our federal treasurer said again tonight, was talking again tonight in the news in a, in a presser, that he was, um, you know, it, it was no longer if there was a worldwide recession, there is a world for a worldwide recession coming. It's a definite, which I thought was really interesting. Is that a um, breaking it to us gently and preparing us? Um, yep, barter. Trade and barter. Why not? If you can, why not? Um, it's sort of like in a true grid down situation, you know, with the people going crazy having to um barricade yourselves in your homes or whatever this is just a what if scenario it's not going to happen you know being able to barter having things to barter or skills to barter really really important so you know build your skills too. <laughs> prepare by building skills um learn to do things Um, Selena, he should be able to go to his GP 
and get a referral to a free dentist um, under, under Medicare. I'm not sure how many you're allowed two free dental treatments a year under Medicare. You don't need to have a healthcare card to do it. I'll need to check that but because it's been a while since I did check that. But he can get under Medicare, but he needs a referral from his his GP sounds weird, but from his GP. Um, yes, the LED light bulb changeover was hilarious. They knocked on our door and wanted to do them. Said, how many light bulbs do you need changed? And I said, 49. We got a lot of lights in our house. We don't use them all. We've got a lot of lights in our house. Poor guy had to make an appointment to come back. It was hilarious. Um Yeah, great idea, Delaney. Yvonne made it from the beginning. Yay! Hello, Maureen. Catherine preserves something every single day. Well done. Uh, I haven't heard that um, about Andrews, but you know what? How's he going to do it? How can he do it? He can't walk into every backyard and rip out gardens. Just can't do it. Um we'd all get grow lights and grow inside we'd all become black market gardeners underground gardeners that's what we'd become um yep that's exactly right kylie if you if you are prepared it doesn't matter what happens you can cope with it and you will you will write it out it, it, but don't stop just don't stop repairing keep doing it and i'm not saying that to scare anyone and i'm not um i'm not trying to be a doom and gloomer we really should be preparing all the time for anything it doesn't matter what it is it could be your nephew's birthday you prepare for it by thinking it's his birthday in a couple of months what would he like do i need to get a card do i need wrapping paper you are preparing it's a part of our lives that for a lot of people they don't even realize they're doing it and then when someone says oh you need to be prepared they automatically think that you are a complete and utter whack job that should be you know living in a barbed wire compound or something no that's not it and that's not what i'm telling anyone to do i'm just saying use your brain use your common sense and plan ahead prepare because then if it doesn't happen well and good you can just keep living if it does happen hey you're prepared you can just keep living there's no drama. Um, 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 for years I used Gatorine to grow strawberries and herbs and um, lettuce 
had gutter on all the back fence, so right along the back fence, I had two full rows of it on the two things, strawberries and lettuce, work the treat, save the garden space. Use whatever you can. If it can hold soil and hold and drain water, you can grow in it. Um, um, oops. <laughs> Sorry, most people. Most people can't identify what's edible, so it won't be too hard to grow foods equally. Made me laugh because um, on a, another group I was, I was on, they were talking about horse carrots. Now, I grew up with horse carrots. We just ate horse carrots. They came in a big bag from the market, giant, huge bag, and they were odd shapes. They were really big or really small or some of them might have been a bit split or whatever, but they were really cheap, so mum bought horse carrots. That's what they were called, horse carrots. Someone said on this group, someone said, you know, she was asked the question, you know, could people eat horse carrots? And our Joy, who's in the same group, and I don't think she's on tonight, she goes dancing. Um, she said someone once asked her if you could eat juicing carrots. <laughs> and she, she didn't, you know, she didn't know what to do with some people, how to help some people. And I, my comment was along the lines of, you know what, I'm so glad there's special people like that in the world because it makes saving money for me easier. Seriously, it was hilarious. Um, okay. Wow, you guys are really good at gardening, aren't you? Look at them. Look at your guy. I'm so impressed. Yeah, Maddie, the fourth lockdown, really, really. I was, um, oh, it, yeah, just about did the end of me, so. Uh, <laughs> Jane forgot to, that's our like, saving. Um, I used one of our, in the cooking video I did the other day, I used the last of our mini cabbages from the garden. Um, it was really, really good. First, uh, right here, got a cauliflower. I think it's very hard when you have a pantry to do a challenge like shelf timber because you are so used to just shopping your pantry. I struggled a bit too. And in the end, I went, <sighs> we eat from the pantry. We eat shelf timber every month of the year in our house. Um Well, yes, it's the average of sales. So what they do is work out the cost of all the properties, divide it, and it comes out at 500K. So it's just the average. Um,
goodness sorry guys I, I could keep talking i'm trying to um skip through okay all right Guys, okay. Okay, all right. So, where am I? Let me see where I am. Okay, nearly time to finish. We might finish a bit earlier tonight anyway. But we prepare and it does, look, we prepare for anything and it does save us money. It does save us time and it certainly saves us our own personal energy. It saves fuel energy it saves electric energy by being prepared you know i did if you haven't seen it it was a bit of a chaotic video um i did the other day of prepping the salads for the week <laughs> it's i swear look my videos that's what my life is like guys so what happens gets filmed and you guys get to see it um i prepped once I cooked once we, we get, we'll eat for the week for that and it took 40 minutes I was um it was 55 minutes with cleanup you know wiping the, doing the dishes wiping down the benches sweeping the floor it was 55 minutes to do the potato salad the pasta salad the coleslaw boil the eggs because of course it's really hard to boil eggs because you've got to watch them um get it all done put it all in the fridge wipe down the benches run the um scraps out to the compost and the worms sweep the floor do the dishes it, it was all done in 55 minutes so all i did last night for tea was open the fridge take out the containers put the salad on the plate put it back in the fridge um we had spaghetti tonight tomorrow night i will do the same thing because now we're in salad season we don't cook inside so if they want hot veggies they have to be done outside um, it saves you money it saves time it saves you energy it just makes sense to at least be a little prepared anyway off my hobby horse thank you for sticking with me this long for watching for listening to me now Again, if anything I've said has scared you, that isn't my intention. But please ask yourself why you're scared and find out what um, scares you about what, of what I said so you can take care of it. If you're watching this on the replay, so I know you've made it this far, could you do me a favour and leave a comment in the comments below just start it with prepare or just leave the comment saying prepare just so i know who's what right to the end it helps me with planning the future videos so i know what you like to watch and hear i read all the comments and i do my best to answer your questions please remember to like subscribe and share these three things help our channel grow and make it easier to find us in the gazillions of channels that are on YouTube. And, if, you know, the easier it is to find us, the easier it is for us to spread the message that it is not only okay to live life debt-free, cashed up and laughing, because sometimes people think it's not. They think that if they're not in debt, there's something wrong with them. They think they've got savings. There's something wrong with them. But it's absolutely doable, even in the crazy times that are 2022. All right, happy cheapskating, everyone. Have a great week. I will be back next week with another live video. Thank you so much for joining me, and I will see you then. Bye.